everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we are making these beautiful knee-high socks, making it with the Fair Isle design in crochet. Usually you see the Fair Isle design in knitting, but I created these socks in the Fair Isle look in crochet and look at these looks like little hearts these are so fabulous i cannot wait to make these with you today so i'm going to get into the supplies and the frequently asked questions about sizing because i know you want to make these in all sizes <laughs> and then we'll get into making these so a big huge thank you to red heart yarns for providing this yarn today i'm using this fabulous super buttery soft amore yarn this yarn is in so incredibly soft. I love it so much. It was fun to work with it. And um, yeah, Red Heart Yarns is coming out with some really nice new yarns. So it was great to use this. The two colors that I am using, well, my accent color with the little um, red stitches here is called Ruibos, Ruibos? actually don't really know how to say that word but it's like a red tone and then the second one is called chamomile that's going to be my main color so you need to pick two colors and i actually didn't do the math but you're going to need two skeins of each ball of yarn so let's do the math real quick here 198 yards per ball okay you can see there are 100 grams three and a half ounces 181 meters that's the size of each of these balls of yarn um, and you can use two color two of each color okay so buy two red and two white or whatever colors you want to use two of each color okay and you can do the math on that because I'm not going to on camera right now but um, just make sure that you have enough yarn to make the two socks now if you don't want to have access to getting a more yarn, you can go to yarnsub.com and type in the Red Heart Amore yarn and all the substitution types of yarn that are available in your country or in your area will pop up and are available. This is a size 4 medium worsted weight yarn, so you can use any worsted weight yarn. Um, any, uh, I would recommend also a cotton yarn. Um, I know Red Heart does have a cotton scrubby smoothie, it's called. That one is really nice to also use uh, for socks. It's just nice to use a lighter yarn. You could use um, wool if you'd like to, but um, that can get a, a little warm. <laughs> and a lot of people have an allergy to wool too. I have an allergy to wool, so you want to make sure that you are able to have the wool on your feet. So that is all the information for the yarn. If you can't get a more yarn, you can use other yarns, so you're in luck. So for the crochet hook size, we are using a G-sized hook. This hook is so fabulous. I got this from the Etsy shop, Would Be Fancy. I will put a link in the description of this video for this crochet hook or ones like it. It's a hand carved ergonomic handle and it fits in the palm of your hand so nicely. I absolutely love using this crochet hook. It was super comfortable using it throughout this whole project and if you, whichever way you hold your hook, it just is so comfortable and you can choose whatever size you want of hook and if it, it's fixed in there really nicely and yeah they're really wonderful and there's international shipping so anybody can really get these so make sure to check out the Etsy shop would be fancy and uh, get your crochet hooks we're using a G hook which is 4.25 millimeters <laughs> so make sure you have that if you need to though use an H hook. Uh, if you want these like a little looser or bigger or like more scrunchier, you can see it's kind of stiff um, when I finished. If you want it a little bit looser, you can use an H size hook, which is five millimeters, and that's going to be perfect as well. You're also going to need a scissors and a yarn needle to obviously cut your yarns and sew in some ends. And I have this extra piece of yarn here. This is my stitch marker. <laughs> You're going to need a stitch marker because for majority of this pattern, 
actually this whole sock basically is worked in continuous rounds. We are not slip stitching and chaining or anything. So you're going to need a stitch marker. It helped me immensely through this whole project. So we're starting from the bottom, started from the bottom. Now we're here. <laughs> we're going to go all the way up and we're going to create a hole for the whole, uh, heel. And the heel is the very last thing that we make. So we're going to start from the he uh, toe here and we're working all the way up, making a hole for the heel, then going Going all the way up to the cuff making the cuff and then we make the heel now in this tutorial I only show the left leg the left foot they are so similar and the for the right and left foot the only difference for these two is the heel hole and I explain that later on in this tutorial. But if it gets too confusing, I am going to have the written pattern on yarnutopia.com. Uh, so you can see, I'm going to write the pattern in a way where it shows left foot and right foot. So they are so similar from the toe up to the heel, but then pat around the heel part and this uh, increase part, it's different for both feet. And I am going to write that out on the pattern in yarnutopia.com. But then once you're done increasing, it is exactly the same for the right and left foot. And then the cuff is obviously the same and the heel is obviously the same. So it's a very simple pattern once you get the hang of the Fair Isle design. And another thing about the Fair Isle design is that you actually work with the yarn. When you're doing the Fair Isle stitches, you work with both of the yarns at the same time and you're going to be working over the top of the yarn. And you'll see that in the tutorial. It is so fabulous. I loved it so much working with both strands. And it was a challenge. It was a lot of fun. So that is all the information about these socks and for sizing throughout this whole tutorial i do mention after each section if you need to make these smaller or bigger it is a multiple of four so you can make these as big as you want but i only demonstrate the adult size and for the adult size the sole let's see measures it stretches up to 10 inches long which is about 24 or 25 yeah about 24 centimeters okay so that's how big the sole stretches i mean it's extremely stretchy yarn you guys so just make sure you measure from your toe to your heel how long it is for you to make the increase you can make as many rows as you want in this section and then obviously in this length too, you can make this uh, your leg part up to your knee as long or short as you need these to be. Um, but from the heel, the back of the heel to the top of the cuff, it's about 13 and a half inches, okay, which is 36 centimeters or 35 centimeters. So that's how long um, these socks are. From toe to cuff... It's about 20, 21 and a half inches, which is 54 centimeters. So that's how long this piece is. And it took me a, a while to make these. I, it took me a, f a few days <laughs> to film this. So um, this is a tedious project because we are working with single crochet. So that is all the information I have today. I know this intro is very long. If you're an experienced crocheter, you can just obviously have fast forward through this, but I hope you enjoy this uh, video tutorial and check out the written pattern on yarnutopia.com. Check out all the links in the description of this video. It'll have the link to the pattern, link to the Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all that stuff. You can find me on social media. I would love to see if you make these these socks please share your photos i would love to see what your socks look like oh my gosh this was one of my most favorite projects and it was a little challenging and i loved it so much these are wonderful big thank you to red heart yarns for providing this yarn today a big thank you to my dad who is filming what does he films all of our videos at yarn utopia and he edits them and takes all the fabulous photos and big thank you to you for watching Let's get started and make these Fair Isle socks. All right, we're going to start off with the toe color. Here's my um, sock that I have done already. And we are going to start from the toe, working our way up the foot 
up here. So I'm going to start with this ma this color here. I guess this would be considered my accent color. So I'm going to use this red tone. You can choose whatever color you want. And we are going to start off with a slip knot. So put your short end over your long end, then fold this down and then pull your long end through and pull tight. And there's your slip knot. You can insert your hook and we can begin. So let's start off by chaining 11. So yarn over and pull through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And what we're going to do is single crochet in the second chain from the hook and each chain across. And what I like to do is turn the chain towards me like this. And you can see these back ridges right here. That is what I like to work into. So in the second chain, so the loop on the hook does not count as a chain. So we're going to count one and two. This one right here, we're going to go into that, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. Okay, that's a single crochet. So go into the next chain and single crochet. And we're just gonna single crochet across this chain until we get to the very last chain. So you can just continue watching me. I'll go a little bit faster here. But you can see I'm working in those back ridges. And that way, because we are actually gonna work on the opposite side of our foundation chain. So that way, the opposite side of our foundation chain, you'll be able to see them as stitches. And it'll be a little bit cleaner edge and everything. So once you have one chain left, we are going to put three of the single crochets in there. So go into that last chain and make three single crochets in that last chain. So there's one, two, and three. And as you can see, I'm turning this around like this. And like I said, we're going to work on the opposite side of our foundation chain. So we can flip this around to the bottom here. And we are going to work into the base of this right here. So we're not going to work in here because that's where these three stitches are worked into right here. So we're going to go into that one right there. So make sure your loop is on your hook go right into this next one right here, single crochet. And also I'm gonna single crochet over the top of this straggler, this loose end here, so I can sew that in basically right away. So single crochet in this next stitch here, and into each stitch until the very last one. So I'm just gonna single crochet across. I know it's kinda of difficult to see because I have my straggler over the top. Here, I'll get that out of the way. So once you have that underneath a few of the stitches, you can let it go, and then you can trim that later. So now I'm just gonna single crochet to the end here. And we're actually going to be putting two single crochets in the very last stitch here. So this last stitch right here, where we put our very first single crochet right there, we're going to put two single crochets in there because the end has three and this end should have three in total. Okay, so one, two, three there. Opposite end, one, two, three there. And that was round one. So it looks like I have 21 stitches after round one, okay? So now what we're going to do, I'm going to actually grab... Oh, I didn't cut my... A uh, little straggler here. Let me cut a piece of different colored yarn and we are going to use that as a stitch marker. So what we're going to do, you can stick a stitch marker in here if you have a legit looking stitch marker or like a pin or a bobby pin or something, safety pin. You can stick it right in there but I just have this extra piece of yarn and we are going to move this up every round because we're going to be working in continuous rounds. Okay, so for round number two, it says single crochet in the first 10 stitches. So let me get my stitch marker in the position here. There's my first stitch right here. And what we're going to actually do is work into the actual stitch, not... Okay, so it's kind of confusing and that's what I want to show you in this video. 
and we're not working in the top of the stitch like this. Okay, usually we work in the top of the stitch right here, but we're actually going to be, you can see there's two vertical lines right there. We are actually going to be working in between those. And what I like to do with my hook, you can see this pointy part of my hook right there. I'm going to stick that into the stitch and go to the back, just like that. So it's through the actual stitch, like the middle of the stitch. And we are going to single crochet into that first stitch. Okay. That is going to create the fair aisle look and the knit look when we are crocheting this piece. So I'll show you in this next stitch here. You can see this vertical line here and this vertical line here. Go in between those with your hook, just like that, to the back. Yarn over it, pull it through. Okay, yarn over, pull through two. It's kind of like an extended single crochet. Okay, so you let me get my, um, or I'll use my scissors here. Those are pointy. Okay, so you can see this vertical line right here and this vertical line right here. It looks like a little V, sort of. So we're going to go in between those two. Okay, and I like to use that pointy part of my hook right there to go into stitch, yarn over, pull through, okay, and then yarn over and pull through two. And that's how all of these stitches are going to be in this whole pattern, okay? So you get pretty used to hooking your hook in like this through the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, okay? So we have to do that in ten stitches, one, two, three, four. Here's five and six. And this first round is going to be the hardest, <laughs> I promise. It gets much easier after this. <laughs> so just bear with me. Let's see how many stitches I have. I think this is nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this is ten. Okay, so once you have single crocheted in these first ten stitches, you should be to the middle single crochet of the three single crochet grouping on the end here. And what we're going to do at this point is put two single crochets into this next stitch right here. So what I'm going to do actually is again work into the vertical or in between those two vertical lines into the stitch one and two okay and then we're going to single crochet into the next ten stitches and I will come back once I do that all right, you should have one stitch left right here. We are going to put two single crochets into this very last stitch and always work in between those two vertical lines in the middle of the stitch, just like that, okay? Now, at this point, it does not actually matter where your stitch marker is. You want to you wanna make sure your stitch marker um, is on this side to mark your rounds, but what we're actually going to do is mark our rounds. It looks like this right now. It's like a little oval, okay? And what we're actually going to do is mark each end of our piece okay uh, by the end of round two you should have 23 stitches okay so what we're actually going to do now is mark both ends of our uh, piece here so I'm just gonna place a stitch marker on one end between the two stitches I would say probably this stitch right here and these are going to be our increased stitches okay and what you could do is actually use two different colored stitch markers. That probably is a better idea. Just so you know which one is our first, the beginning of our round, and which one is the end of our round. So let me grab a different color here. That's probably a, a better idea. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I'm going to actually use this color for this side. 
So this my this um, stitch marker is the side that is not the beginning of our round. This is just where I need to increase on this side. And this gray one, I'll just remember, uh, this will be the beginning of our round. And also our stitch marker for this side. Okay, and I'm actually going to move it between these two stitches because one of these two stitches will be where we increase. Now, this part is creator's choice. Let me move this in here. Do, do, do. Where exactly you want to increase will be creator's choice. So it'll be on either end though. Okay, so in this stitch and in this stitch. The, those are the two ends where we're going to be increasing to make the toe. And let me grab my other sock so you can see what I'm talking about. So we got to this point right here. So now you can see this one comes out and this one comes out. We're going to be increasing on each side. And I don't know if I can show you here. But you can see sort of a line right here is where our increases were. Well, I was wearing these socks and I have cat hair all over these. Okay, so... <laughs> Well, let's move on. So rounds, let's see here, rounds three through 11 for me, it'll be rows three through 11, we are going to be increasing. And remember to always work into the actual stitch also. So that's going to be, a, it's going to be a little trick, a little tricky area here. Just go in each stitch. Okay, just single crochet in each stitch until you get to your stitch marker and put two single crochets on each end. Now, that will change. It's not going to be consistently the same stitch every round that you're going to put two stitches in. You just kind of have to eyeball it where the ends look, where the line meets up in the center here, all the way to the end. It's going to um, kind of migrate sideways, so you're going to always have to just eyeball it and make sure that it's straight on each side. So, And you will know what, that, what I mean when you get to that point. So just continue single crocheting and putting two single crochets where each of your stitch markers are. Okay, And I'm going to do that for rounds 3 through 11. I will end up having 41 stitches around at the end of round 11. So once I have my 41 stitches, I will come back and show you. Okay, so I hit my stitch marker here, actually. I'll show you this round. So I hit my stitch marker here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move my stitch marker up. So just kind of move it up just like that. I'm going to go into this next stitch right here that the stitch marker is in. Okay, and I'm going to put my two single crochets in there. One and two. Now you can see it kind of goes off to this side here where that stitch marker is. Can't really, there we go. So it's going kind of diagonal that way. So our next increase is actually going to be into this stitch because it's straight across this middle line. As you can see, our middle line right here. So I'll actually increase in that second one of those increases in the next round. I hope that makes sense. Just increase on both ends. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put one single crochet in each stitch until I hit my next stitch marker. And I'm just gonna do this until I have the 41 stitches. And once I have that, I will come back and we can go on to round 12. Now if this is confusing for you, you can always follow along with the written pattern, but just increase on each end until you have 41 stitches. So I'm going to do that and I'll come right back. All right, so I just wanted to say a couple of things going on. I'm finishing round 11 here. So on my round 11, I had 41 stitches um, when I was on this side of my piece. And so my uh, other increase that would be on this side, I uh, did not do. So I only have 41 stitches. If, you, if I did one on this side, I would have 42 stitches. So just count your stitches around. Do an increase if you need to. If you don't need to, uh, don't do it. <laughs> so 
this is what your piece should look like. So I'm going to pull this out real quick. And you can see here, um, I didn't really need to use this stitch marker. I used it on some rounds, but not all the rounds. Uh, and as you can see, it migrated this way. And you can see my straight line down the center here. And where I increased was uh, in this vicinity. And you can see that there. So I'm going to remove this stitch marker on this side because it, it really doesn't matter. But you can see I... Uh, put the increases, the two single crochets in each round on this side, okay? Now when you come back to the beginning, and the nice thing is working into the stitch, you can see that the design is really cool looking already. So there is the single crochet working into the, between those two vertical lines there. So that looks nice. So now, as it was migrating, so was my beginning of my round. So I didn't end up migrating this one. Um, I just kept this one on where my round started. And you can see I just eyeballed it where this vertical or this straight line is. I just eyeballed it and kind of just did my increases in various stitches on this side. So as you can see, this is the shape it should look like when you flatten it out. You can see it comes out on this side and out on this side. Now if you needed to do less or more um, increases, if this does not fit the tip of your toes, you can do less or more. The uh, combination you want to do is increase to be a multiple of 4 plus 1. So 40 is a multiple of 4 plus 1, I have 41 stitches around. Okay, so just make sure at, at the end of where your toe should be, where your increases need to go. Uh, but this uh, this will fit around a, an adult size foot. It is really stretchy, and that should fit an adult size foot. So it should be a multiple of four plus one at this point. Uh, and this is finishing round eleven. So that's all the information I have. Um, if you are still a little confused, please write me on the blog. I will try to answer your questions. Um, but you can see that working into the stitch, it looks so nice. Just the stitching looks almost knit. It's really cool. So going on to round 12 now. So I removed that stitch marker that was on this side. We're still going to continue using this one because this is the beginning of our round, okay? So we're going to continue using this stitch marker. I'm moving my stitch marker up a row. And we are going to go on to round 12. Round 12 is just putting one single crochet into each stitch around. So absolutely no increases or anything. So we're just going to have the same amount of stitches, 41 stitches. And I'm going to go a little slow here so you can, you can see where I'm going into the middle of the stitch and making my single crochet. Okay, into the between those two vertical lines there into that stitch just like that okay and that is exactly where each stitch should be made okay because that will create the fair isle design especially when we introduce the second color so i'm just going to put one single crochet into each stitch around for round 12 and then at round 13 we'll be able to introduce our second color all right so i single crocheted around i have one stitch left when you have one stitch left on round 12, we are going to change color to go on to round 13. So what I'm going to do to show you to sh uh, change color, this is what you have to do for changing color every time we change color. We're going to go into the stitch and we're going to yarn over with our current color and pull it through that stitch. Now we are going to hold these two loops on our hook, drop this color in the front. So we're going to pull it to the front and kind of pinch it down with our thumb. And we're going to grab our new color and pull that through those two loops, just like that. And that finishes off that round. Now you can see I'm taking our old color and moving it over the top of our round here. Now, for this next round, we're not going to be crocheting over the top of our uh, strands here. We are going to leave them in the back, okay? For the next round, round 13, 
We are going to repeat the last round of round 12, just single crochet into each stitch, now using our new color. So I'm using this um, white, off-white color right now, and so I'm just using these two colors throughout my pattern. As you can see, I have, oops, I, I dropped my hook, but um, you can see I dropped the red color in the back. However, I am not cutting it, okay? We're just going to leave that there because we will pick it up in the next round. So just leave it in the back there, okay? So I'm just going to work now with this off-white color and just single crochet into each stitch and remember to go into the middle of the stitch, how I showed you earlier. Or how I am showing you. <laughs> Just like this. Into the stitch. Okay, and I'll do that. And again, 41 stitches around on, on this. I'll do that and then I'll come back and we'll go on to round 14. Alright, so once you have um, one stitch left here, we're going to just do a regular single crochet in there, just like that. Okay, so now we have all of this all single crocheted around. So now, round 14, we are going to introduce the Fair Isle design. So remember we dropped that red in the back there. We're going to, well, this white one here, where this short strand, we'll sew that in later. Um, but we are going to pick up this red during this round, okay? What we're first going to start off with is moving our stitch marker up. <laughs> and then on round 14, we want to get back down to a multiple of four. So I have 41 stitches, so I am going to single crochet these two stitches together um, because first off, this will be underneath the foot. And as you can see, where our this row starts here is red and then it turns to white right away and there's like a little nick in there little it's like a ridge that is going to be on the underside of the foot so don't worry about how that's going to look because nobody will even see that if you turn this over to the top this is the top of the toe the top of the shoe or the slipper here so that's gonna be nice and clean across the edge there that's why um, I like working in continuous rounds because you can hide this underneath your foot and then it'll be fine. So moving my stitch marker up, I am going to single crochet these first two stitches together using this pearl color. So we're going to go in to this first stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, actually into the actual, into there, sorry. Okay, then into the next stitch, into there and then yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And there is a single crochet two together because we did those two into one stitch, okay? And that is the only decrease in this whole pattern, okay? Now what we're going to do is single crochet into the next stitch right here. So go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and now in this next stitch is where we're going to change color to red. So we're going to go into this stitch, yarn over with the white, pull it through, okay? Then fold this forward, pull, uh, hold it down with your thumb, grab the red that we dropped in the back, okay? And you want to pull that one tight because it's um, way over here. So we're going to pull that tight and pull yarn over with that and pull it through. Okay? Now, at this point, we are going to be working over the top of this strand. Okay? Now, for this next stitch, we are going to just put our one stitch. We're going to change back to pearl and or this off-white color immediately. So for we're just going to do one stitch of red. So what we're going to do is go into this next stitch here into the into the stitch right there and we're going to go underneath everything underneath this uh, white as well yarn over with the red and pull it through okay then we're going to fold this forward okay bring it forward pinch it down take this white 
yarn it over our hook and then pull that through both of those loops and we've just created one red stitch and now we're going to do three white stitches one red stitch three white stitches one red stitch all the way around okay so let me go into this next stitch here and we're working over the top of each we're sh like sh dragging along both strands along the whole thing and if you've ever done graph gans this is a great way to learn graph gans because that's what you do you just trail along your yarn underneath your stitches when you're changing color so go into this next stitch with the white yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through too so I just worked over the top of the red there. And we're doing three stitches of white here. One, two, and on the third one, we are going to change our color to the red. So go into the, this next one here, yarn over, pull through, fold this forward, pinch it with your thumb, yarn over with the red, and pull it through both loops. Then go into the next stitch, working over the white here, yarn over, pull through, fold the red forward, yarn over with the white, pull through both loops, and there's one red stitch. And as you can see, what we've created, one red stitch, three white stitches. One red stitch, we're going to do that all the way around then. So there's no increasing or anything at this point. We're just going to be putting one single crochet or I'm sorry one single crochet in the next three stitches of this white color one two on the third stitch we're going to change to red so fold this forward yarn over with red pull it through and then just make one red stitch so go in with red yarn over pull through fold the red forward yarn over with white and pull it through both of those loops okay and there's one red stitch so do that all the way around now I do want to mention that your yarn balls the two yarn balls that you have are going to get twisted so what I recommend is halfway through or if you know between your rounds or whatever to pause your work and unwind untangle them because it is going to um, get pretty twisted throughout so what I'm going to do here is just pull this up set this down and take the two balls of yarn that I'm working with here and just untangle them because they are going to get twisted okay and then we can just continue until they get twisted again <laughs> and that is just the nature of the game It's just gonna happen so just do that all the way around and once I have you can see we are going to have um, the start of our Fair Isle design here looking really good so far once I get all the way around doing the same concept I'll come back and I'll show you what to do for round 15 Alright, I am just finishing um, round 14 here, and we are actually ending with a red stitch, okay? So I'm just going to do my three white stitches in a row, switching to red on the last stitch, going into the very last stitch, yarn over with red, pull it through, pull this forward, and finish with white. Okay, now what we're going to do is go on to round 15, and we are going to move our stitch marker up here. And you can see I'm putting the stitch marker between the two because we are going to trail this just one stitch over. And then we're going to drop the red in the back. Okay, so I'll show you how to do that. Starting row 15 now, we are going to single crochet around with just the white. So we're going to go into this very first stitch here. Okay, that's our single crochet two together stitch. Just go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, 
yarn over, pull through, two. Now I'm going to drop this red in the back because we will pick that up in the next round. Okay, so just drop that in the back and don't work over it on this round. And we're just going to work with just the white color through this whole round, just putting one single crochet in each stitch around. You'll have 40 stitches around then, and or your multiple of four on this round. And you can see here, when I get to the stitches where the red is underneath these stitches, you want to get in, and I know it's going to be hard to see, but you can see the red in there, right there. You want to get in underneath everything so that when you pull this through, it gets hidden in there. So it's hidden completely. If you don't do that, no big deal, but you will kind of be able to see it then between your stitches um, later on. But no big deal, really. It's underneath the stitches and it's hidden. So it's going to look great. So I'm just going to single crochet around working into the stitch and doing that all the way around. Um, then I'll come back. We'll go on to round 16 next. All right, that was easy. So round 15 was just a single crochet around in the stitch. So we are going to move our stitch marker up and go on to round 16 now. So move that up. And we are going to now do the Fair Isle design once again. So instead of doing it how we did the uh, previous Fair Isle round right there, round 14, we have the red over here. But we want these dots or these red stitches to be offset. So we are going to have one in this second stitch. Then we're going to skip these three. We're going to just do the three sing uh, white single crochets here and then the next stitch will be red. Then three white, then one red. Three white and one red. But the way you want to do it, you want to count your stitches. So we are going to put them in the middle here. So that's why we had a multiple of four, because we have three white and one red. So that's a multiple of four. So that's why, that's where I get that, if that was, if you were concerned about that. Moving our stitch marker up, round 16 now. We are just going to single crochet with the pearl in one stitch, which means we have to change the color immediately. So let's go into the first stitch. It can be kind of difficult if your stitch marker is in the way. So go into the very first stitch there, yarn over with the white, pull it through, pull that forward, grab the red that's in the back, yarn that uh, over and pull that through those two loops. Now pull that one tight because you don't want there to be any straggler in the back there. Even though nobody's going to see that, you don't want there to be any loops for your toes to get caught or anything. Okay? So now we're going to single crochet with one red. So go into this next stitch. Okay, work over the top of this white here, yarn over and pull through with red. Pull the red yarn forward, yarn over with the white, and pull that through. And now we're just going to continue our Fair Isle design. So three white, one, two, and three, working over the top of our red straggler here. Okay, pulling this forward on the third stitch of the white, yarning over with the red, changing its color, there we go, and making one red. Okay, now if you are concerned where yours are lining up, you just want to make sure that it is the middle stitch between the two red here. So you can see the two red here, and there's three stitches here. Above these three stitches, there's three stitches here. So in the middle one should be red on a fair aisle round, okay? So that is where that one should be. And then we're just doing three white. And that is all we're doing for this round. Very simple. So it's just different than round 14 because we started this round differently with just one 
of the white single crochets changing to red right away. So that's why it was a little different than round 14, especially when we did a single crochet two together on round 14. So that won't be any longer in this pattern. <laughs> no more decreases. We will only be increasing actually. Let's see here. So we have this stitch here. Make sure not to skip any stitches because that is also, uh, that could also create a problem with your um, design. So uh, yeah, we're just going to be increasing from here on out. So this, uh, this part here is above the foot. It's actually over the toe and over the foot part until we get to the heel. And then after the heel is where we really um, increase. There's no increases on these rounds right here. Let's see. I have to change color. <laughs> kind of just babbling on. So I'm just trying to give you as much information about this pattern as possible. Um, so sorry if I'm talking too much, but I will just continue this little fair aisle design on this um, round and then I'll meet you up for round 17. All right, so we're, you will end round 16 with a single crochet of this white color or your... Um, I guess I would call this with a main color. You'll uh, end with two of those stitches. Okay, because we started with one. So you wanna make sure there's three in a row. Okay. And you can see I was working over the top of the uh, red there. And we are gonna move our stitch marker up. Okay, again, over the top of that. And for round 17, we're basically just repeating round 15. So just a single crochet in each stitch with the white. Now, for the next round though, see, for round 17, we're gonna single crochet over the top of this red strand until we get to the middle uh, white one right here because that's where we'll pick up the red in the next round. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna single crochet over the top of my red strand until I get to that one, which would just be these three stitches. Okay, just like that. And now I'm going to drop that red in the back. And then I'm just going to continue with the white all the way around. And not working over the top of the red, just single crocheting into each stitch, just like I showed you for round 15. So very simple. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you how to do round 18 next. Alright, just finishing this round here. That was round 17. Round 18 now, we are going to move our stitch marker up. And we are going to make the Fair Isle design again. And look at how lovely those are looking. I love it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so for round 18, instead of... Um, so how we did this round, let's see, that was uh, round 16, we single crocheted with white in one stitch and then changed to red immediately. However, if we did that, then the stitch would be right above this one, okay? So we want to offset them, so we're, our first red stitch is not going to be till here, which means we have to single crochet in these three stitches with white until we change to red to be lined up with this one. Uh, from round 14 here. So we're going to single crochet with the white for three stitches. So one, here's two, and the third stitch we're going to change to red. So yarn over with the white and pull it through the stitch, pull that forward, grab onto the red, and then yarn over and pull that through both of those loops. And then change to the red, so now we're in this one stitch we're going to do red. So yarn over with the red and pull it through the stitch. Pull the red forward, grab onto the white, and finish that stitch off. And now we're going to be working over the top of those strands, like how we did for round 16. Uh, basically just repeating what we did, uh, just doing the fair aisle design. So single crochet into three stitches changing color on the third stitch with the white, and then do one stitch of the red. Make sure it's lined up. Oh, my cat. I'm so sorry if you can see her. 
Okay, good. <laughs> She's out of the camera. She just jumped up on the table. So we're just single crocheting with the red. Oh, but we gotta change color back to the white. So don't finish off with red. Yarn over, pull through with white. Okay. <laughs> My cat jumped up on the table and then she was uninterested and left. <laughs> so now we are going to single crochet in three of the stitches with white. And remember to go into the stitch. Remember to go over the top of the straggler. <laughs> it's just a lot of remembering to do that. But once you get the hang of it, look at how fast I'm going now. Like, you really can get the hang of it and just zoom right through. Just like that. So do that all the way around and then I will come back and tell you oops, what the next <laughs> step is going to be. <laughs> When you're finishing round 18 here, we are finishing with a red stitch, okay? So I'm just going to make a red stitch in my last stitch, but just change back to the white immediately. Just like that. And now we can move our stitch marker up. And I am going to go on to now rounds 19 through 43 are going to be a repeat of rounds 15, let me see here, round 15, 16, 17, and 18, okay? So round 19 is going to be a repeat of round 15, which is just single crochet with the white. Then round 20 is going to be a repeat of round 16 here with the fair isle design, but it's going to start with one single crochet of white and then the next stitch is going to be red and then so on, making the Fair Isle design. Then round 21 is going to be a repeat of round 17, and then round 22 is going to be a repeat of round 18. And then just repeat 15, 16, 17, and 18. 15, 16, 17, and 18. 15, 16, 17, and 18. Until you finish round 43. So I am going to do that. It will take a little bit of time. Now, I am going to go to round 43, okay? So you can go however long you need to. And if you need to stick this on your foot and see how far you need to go, you can. And if round 43 is too far or round 43 isn't far enough, you can stop early or continue more. And I'm crocheting over the top of this one. When you do your plain single crochet rounds, do not crochet over the top of your stitch or I'm um, um, sorry on um, over your red um, leave that in the back so I was talking too much and I forgot sorry about that so just crochet repeating rounds 15 through 18 until this piece is over the whole foot and uh, you're ready for to, to make the heel okay um, mine, let me, I'm not sure if I have my measure tape here. So this is the sock that I have finished here. Okay, so we're doing from here to here till f round 43, okay? So let me measure this, what that measures for me. So it's about seven inches from the tip of the toe to round 43 here which is about 18 centimeters, um, 17 centimeters, between 17 and 18 centimeters, okay? So that's how long mine is. Now you can make yours longer or shorter, okay? Depending on how long or short your foot is up until your heel. So I'm just going to do that. And when I finish round 43, it'll be for round 43 for me, but when I finish round 43, um, or when you get to the part where you're going to make the heel, I will show you what to do next because I have to show you that is the point where the right foot and the left foot kind of change. But this part, the toe, from the tip of the toe to round 43 for both feet is exactly the same. So I will come back and show you what to do next. 
All right, welcome back. So round 43 is a repeat of round 15. It's just a single crochet in each stitch around with the um, white. So this is what your work should look like. I ended up cutting my yarn already because we are going to fasten this piece off. This is for uh, the right and left foot. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. I ended up pulling out my stitch marker too. This is my last stitch. And you can see the Fair Isle design looks so lovely. I absolutely am super happy with this. So now we can go on to the next part of making the um, leg part. We're going to actually make the heel whole and then go on to making the leg. So this is the part of the foot in the in the written pattern this is the foot part okay next the next part is going to be the leg part after the heel okay so what we're going to do at this point is fasten off so go into the next stitch you can just go into the top part of the stitch you don't have to go like into the stitch like we've been doing just yarn over pull through and through the loop on your hook to slip stitch and then chain one, I've already cut this yarn, so the chain one, pull it all the way through that chain one and pull that tight. And that's how you fasten off. And um, for the red yarn, you just have to cut that and then just sew it in. And as you can see in the back here, I've just sewn that in. And I'll show you how I sew in my ends. We just take the yarn and take our yarn needle. And all I do is just go in the back of my stitches and just sew that in underneath just like this to hide it and you can go back and forth to secure it and that's exactly what I did with the red okay and then trim whatever is left over okay so you can sew in any ends that you may have uh, but this is what it should look like so this is for the right and left foot okay now what we want to do is um, put, so you can see here is where we started our um, first, or uh, this is round 13 here, right? Yeah. So this is where we introduced our uh, fair aisle stitches here, and this was the beginning of our round. So what we want to do is flatten this piece out completely, making sure that this is on the right side, okay, for your right foot. Okay, or I guess either way, it doesn't matter, right foot or left foot. Just make sure that this is on this side, okay? So you want to flatten it out nicely, just like this. Now, we are going to start in a stitch on this side up here, okay, for the right and left foot. Okay, so just stick your hook in one of the stitches. And what I like to do, actually, I'm going to start gotta put it flat sorry there we go okay so I'm gonna start in this stitch and as you can see on this side there's the uh, red stitch right here and then diagonally from it right here the next one is this white one and if you fold this in half that should be on the edge if you fold it perfectly it should be one and I'll open this up here and you can see the um, red stitch right here and this next stitch I guess over like up one and over one okay that's where I'm gonna start and for the right and left foot okay now we want to mark you can mark that stitch with your hook or with a piece of yarn or something and then what we're gonna do is count 20 stitches including that stitch so count one two three four Here's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. And we're going to insert, oh my goodness, we're going to insert our hook, and I'm just marking this with a piece of yarn, okay? That is our 20 stitches. All right. Now, I personally am going to show you the left foot on tutorial 
okay? The right foot is opposite, okay? So I will explain the right foot, but you will have to follow along with the right foot in the crochet written pattern on yarnutopia.com, but, um, and, because I already made a right foot, um, off camera. So I'm going to introduce this one here. So you can see here, this is my foot bottom here, just like this. And you can see that we are at this point here. So what we're going to do now, uh, for the left foot, we're going to start on this side and work around this hole. We're, just pretend this red is not here. We're going to work around this hole. But for the right foot, we are going to start on this side and single crochet first and then end with a chain. And uh, I'll explain that in just a second here. So I already made the right foot. So for the right foot, I'll, sh I'll, I'll explain that first, but then I will show you the left foot. So for the, the right foot, what we're going to do is insert our hook into this first stitch and we are going to use the pearl color. Let me find a skein of yarn here. I just had a skein of yarn. There we go. Okay. So we are going to have the pearl color, this um, chamomile, and we're going to pull that through and we're going to chain up one. You can do this for both, both of the shoe, uh, both of the slippers here. And we are going to single crochet into this first stitch. Let's continue with the same type of stitches, just working into the stitch. Okay, this is for right and left foot. Now, if you're doing the right foot, single crochet into 20 stitches total, which includes this one. Okay, so single crochet in 20 stitches. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to here where you marked. Okay, that should be 20 stitches total. Okay. And actually, I am wrong since the last round was um, the plain single crochets. We want to do the fair aisle. So this next stitch would actually be your red stitches if you are working the right foot. So I'm sorry about that um, mistake here. We're going to introduce the red and then single crochet red, then single crochet three stitches of white, then single crochet one red, then three stitches of white, one red, three stitches of white, until you get to your marked stitch where you single crocheted into 20 stitches, okay? So just do that for the right foot. What I am going to do right now is show you the left foot, which I am going to just single crochet with white here, and for the left foot, we're just going to single crochet that one. And then we're actually going to chain 18. Okay, so we're going to yarn over and pull through, chain 18. One, two, three. Let me grab some more yarn here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And make sure your chain is a little looser. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, then hop over to that 20th stitch. We're going to skip, we're going to skip 20 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, or actually the next one. So then we go into the 21st stitch there. So that would actually be our stitch there. Okay. So we're going to go into that stitch and we're going to single crochet. Okay. It doesn't matter if you needed it to be red or white for the left foot because it looks like it's above this one here. It should be red, but I'm going to skip doing that and just do white. Okay, it will it'll turn out in the end, don't worry. So now we are going to continue with the fair aisle stitches till we get back to the beginning of this round right here. So like I said, for the right foot, you would do this opposite, the opposite way, okay? So 
for the right foot, and I don't want to confuse you too much because um, this, this one that I'm demonstrating right now is the left foot, okay? But for the right foot, you would be doing fair aisle stitches first, and then once you do 20 stitches in a row, you would chain 18 and skip the rest of the stitches around and then meet up at the beginning of your round. So that's in the written pattern, it does show that. So let me show you my finished sock here that I already have. So as you can see for my um, right sock, okay, so pretend that this red is not here. I have attached my yarn right here and you can see here I single crocheted and did the fair aisle stitches okay across this row so white then red three white red three white red all the way across for 20 stitches okay once I got to my 20th this is um, stitch number 20 then I start I chained 18 okay so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen there and eighteen i know it's really hard to see them but i'm trying to show you the best i can so then we get back to the beginning and then we went on to sorry there's so much hair on this so then we went on to the next round which was just our plain uh, single crochets with our white and I know it's hard to see but uh, for the right foot we start with the stitches and end with the chain for that first round of the leg part okay for the left foot we start with first one single crochet and then our chain and now we're going to do the fair aisle stitches until we get to the beginning here again okay that's the best i can explain it now like i said also this stitch does look like it needs to be a red stitch but that is going to be on the inside of the leg and nobody will see that and we will fix it all when we come back <laughs> to this section here. So what I'm trying to do at this point is change my color um, to the red. So let me grab some of this yarn here. Oops. I, uh, I wound up a ball of yarn <laughs> and lost the end of it. So I'm going to find the end of this ball and I'll be right back. Alright, so I found the end of my red yarn. <laughs> so I'm just switching color to that and we are going to finish off round one of the leg part <laughs> at this point. So just continue doing your fair aisle stitching. Just work over this here. Sorry. Okay, and I'm a little loose there. There we go. Okay, and then three single crochets of white. One, two, and three. Change color to red. And you know how to do this already. So, I don't want it to be too confusing for you. So this is the left foot that I am uh, teaching on camera here. Now if you are doing the right foot, you would be doing the fair aisle stitches first and then going on um, to making the chain for the heel. Okay, basically the heel hole. <laughs> Is what I'm gonna call it in the pa in the pattern. So we're going to finish off this. You can just actually continue watching because I'm close to the end here. 
of this round and we're actually going to be inserting a stitch marker because we are working in continuous rounds again so let me just finish this here okay so for my left foot I ended with a single crochet uh, with the white in the last two stitches Okay, so I'm going to insert a stitch marker. Do, 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 do. Let's find one. I'll use this green one. Okay, so now going on to round two of the leg part, we are just going to single crochet into the first stitch here for the left foot here. We are going to single crochet into the first stitch and into each chain. And again, like I showed you in the beginning of this tutorial, we're turning the chain towards us and working into the back ridges of each chain. Okay, just with the plain white color. Okay, this is round two now of the um, leg part and this is for right foot and left foot just single crochet around for round two using just the plain color okay the only difference in the right and left foot really is that first where you're where you're making your hole for your heel right here for the left foot or on this um, on the right foot it will be you'll be actually this will be the start of your round and this would be the end of your round you'd be finishing with a chain but it all I know it sounds weird but I know it, it actually all has to start on this side where this little nick is right there it all has to start on this side Okay, so you can't just start the left foot on this side and the right foot on this side. That's not how it would work. I actually tried that in one of my pieces and it turned out terribly. So we are just going to uh, make it opposite for the right foot and the left foot. Either you're going to start with your chain or you're going to end with a chain for that first round of the leg. Second round is the same for both legs we are going to just single crochet around okay and make sure you get in every chain and every stitch and once you do that oh and by the way I have 38 stitches by the way so two less but that's just around the ankle we are going to be increasing very soon so that this thing can fit around our calf <laughs> because right now I have really big calves <laughs> So I need to increase quite a bit. So I'm just going to single crochet all the way around for round two of the leg and then I'll come back and we'll go on to round three. Alright, so I just did round two of single crocheting all the way around. So I'm going to pull this out real quick and show you. Um, round three is going to be a little different for both the right and left foot. So as you can see, this looks great so far. Look at that. Um, the fair aisle stitches in front and then the heel hole in the back and the reason I was saying though that the um, we have to start in this spot for both left and right foot is because we want this little nick here to be on the bottom of the foot so we have to start on this side so the right foot this would be all single crochets across and then the heel and you'd actually end with this on the back side I hope that makes sense if it does not um, you will just have to play around with it and make sure that for the right foot that this is on the bottom and then your heel hole is on this side wh where this is okay so this is the bottom of the foot so when you turn this over to the top this is what you're looking at if clean straight looking piece and it looks wonderful so just play around with it if you have to start in this spot or in this spot or where you have to start 
on your piece if you do have to start. Some people, you're, wherever this lands on your piece, you might have to start on this side for the left foot and start on this side for the right foot. I mean, you just want to make sure that this is on the bottom, okay? I, I don't want that to be too confusing for you. Next, the next step for round three is for uh, the right foot, you will actually be repeating round 18 that we worked on here, down here. Okay, so round 18 was single crocheting in three stitches and then single crocheting a red, then three stitches, then a red. So that will be this next round for you, most likely. Um, but you just want to continue with the fair aisle stitching for the right foot. And you will see where your stitches line up because you'll be on the on this side of your work. So you'll want to uh, single crochet into three stitches and your fair aisle stitch then will line up with this row down here. So then there'll be one there, there'll be one there, there'll be one there for the red stitches, okay? So just continue with the fair aisle stitching all the way around. And for mine, let me grab my right foot here so I can show you. So this is round one, two, and three. So this is the beginning of my round right here. Okay, you can see I single crocheted one, two, three, white, and then one red. Then three white, then one red. Three white, then one red. So this is my round three of my leg part. Okay, my heel's here. So that is what you would be doing for your right foot and going around, okay, three, one red, three, one red, three, one red, three, one red, three, there. And then I think that you actually end with two whites on that round. Okay, let me double check here on my work. Um, I don't actually have that written on my notebook. So you might end with two white, but uh, let me know in the comments if you do. Um, I will double check my work. But I'm making the left foot on camera here. And for the left foot, now you're gonna have to play around with this. If you look over on this side, that we are supposed to have a red here. Okay, if you look at this red down here, one, two, three rows up, that one will be white, the middle white. So we'll have white, white. So then this one would be red. I know that's that can kind of get confusing, but you can see how the fair aisle look is. So we are kind of creating this. So we're doing three white and one red. So if you want to count back, so if so this, one, this one's going to be red, then we have three white, then one red, three white, one red, three white, one red, and just count back three white, one red, three white. So then my first stitch right here may be red or white. Okay, now in my notes, because I've made a left foot already, in my notes it says for me to do white in the first two stitches and then change to red in my third stitch. So I'm going to try that first. And if that doesn't line up when I get to the other side, then I may frog it and uh, go back. So you really, this round three is going to be creators. Uh, figure creator figure this out <laughs> so I am going to single crochet in these first two stitches for the right foot it will be just second nature because you will be on the top of the foot already at this point um, so you'll just line it up with your stitches here and for my right foot it, it says I actually had to single crochet um, with the pearl with the white color in three stitches and then change to red so it's going to be different for the, the right and left foot on this row. So I'm just going to single crochet in these two stitches. Actually, let me move my stitch marker up. Silly me. And then go on to this part here. Sorry about that. There we go. So going into this first stitch here, single crocheting. 
one and then the second one right here and go into the stitch just like we've been doing okay so we're going to change color into in after the second one here okay so pull that forward yarn over with red pull that through and then I'm going to work the fair aisle stitches so I am going to work my fair aisle stitches around this round and um, I'm going to let you know how it turns out when I finish round three of my left foot okay so I got to um, after the heel part of round three here and um, as you can see I did I'm doing my three single crochets in white and I'm gonna change color to red and it actually does line up for me with this red one down here so in this one here I'm just gonna do the red stitch and then it should line up for me all the way around now for you it might be different um, I, I remember actually making one of these socks and before this uh, red stitch here I only had two stitches and so I ended up putting two stitches in one stitch so that there was three in a row and that doesn't count as an increase but it's not going to really matter much so if you need to just if you only have two stitches here before you're on top of this one just add another stitch if you need to okay and that goes for the right foot as well just make sure that your uh, fair aisle stitches are lining up all the way around your piece so that um, it doesn't uh, go off center or off line because um, one of the socks I ended up doing as one of my prototypes I ended up getting off center off line and it uh, turned into a stripey style <laughs> not really <laughs> looking like a fair aisle design so I just wanted to mention that uh, because that part can get kind of tricky if you need to add or you know change out a few stitches especially like adding stitches you can it's not going to make a difference nobody's going to notice it's just single crocheting and if you have to add one or two stitches here and there to line up your fair aisle design go right ahead that is there's no problem in that at all so that's not going to mess up the design of this at all or the stitch counts or anything um, so you just want to make sure to line those fair aisle stitches the red stitches up and I'm actually coming up to the end here so you can just continue watching I'm going to finish this round and on my right foot um, it looks like my notes said for round three that we single crochet with this white color in the last two stitches so that might be different uh, for you but for me that was how I finished my round and it looks like for my left foot I'm actually ending with a red stitch before my stitch marker so that may be different for you as well <laughs> so but hopefully uh, this is exactly the same as mine um, especially for the left foot okay so I'm moving my stitch marker up and we can go on to round four of the um, right and left foot it's the same we're just gonna single crochet around with the white color and you again like we did in this bottom portion here you want to make sure that your um, your single crocheting over the top of the straggler for the next row where it's going to, where you're gonna pick it up because you don't want it to be you know in the back of your work and your toes get stuck into it and everything so looking ahead for the left foot we'll be single crocheting in the first four stitches for the right foot we are repeating round 16 of the foot part which we always just single crocheting in one stitch um, so for the right foot just single crochet in the right in the first stitch and then leave that in the back there but for the left foot um, looks like my foot is going to be starting with or my next round will be starting with the red in the fifth stitch in so 
I'm going to single crochet in four stitches here over the top of my straggler and then I'm going to leave that straggler in the back of my work and just continue working with the white colored yarn all the way around just single crocheting around so this is round number four of the leg part here just single crocheting around with the white I hope this does not become too confusing for you. You can always follow along with the written portion and I am actually sharing and writing both pieces, both left and right foot in the blog portion. I am just demonstrating the um, left foot on camera here. Okay, so just single crochet around for round four and I'll come back for round five. All right, so I just finished um, round four there, just single crocheted all the way around just with the white. So now the next round is your fair aisle stitches. So again, you want to make sure that they line up. So my next stitch, my next red stitch will actually be right here, okay, on this row. So you can see I'm going to single crochet in these first four stitches and then I'll change to red for my fifth stitch because that'll be... the the middle of these two red stitches here and then three white and then one red then three white and then one red for the right foot just look at your stitches and where they line up and it looks like on my foot piece for my or my leg piece here for my right foot I ended up just having to single crochet one white and then it, the very next one was um, a fair aisle uh, red stitch and then three white and then one red three white and red and red so that would be for the right foot most likely but you'll have to check your own work and see where these red stitches line up and um, go accordingly so I'm going to move my stitch marker up single crochet with the white in four stitches this is my left foot here so I'm going to do four stitches one, two, three, and four. Okay, and I'm going to change to red right after the fourth stitch. It's already in the back there, just like that. And then just make one red stitch right here. Pull that forward, yarn over with white, and pull that through. And now we're just going to trail along the yarns and make our Fair Isle stitch design. And that is super simple <laughs> for round five. So I'm going to do that all the way around. And there is yeah, no increasing yet, but we will get there very soon. So I am going to meet you up when I go on to round six. All right, so it looked like for my round five, I ended with a, a single crochet with uh, the white in the last two stitches, okay? That's for my left foot. Um, it might be different for you, but uh, for the right foot, let's see here, it says um, ended with a single crochet in the last two stitches as well for the right foot, so... Maybe that's for right and left foot. Hmm, interesting. So, um, that might be different for you, though. So don't quote me on that, but that's what happened in my project, just where my Fair Isle red stitches lined up. Okay, so moving my stitch marker up, going on to round six now for the left and right foot. It's exactly the same, just single crochet in each stitch around not working over the top of this red here um, just single crochet in each stitch around with the white or with your main color here now uh, in, when you get to the very last stitch of round six we're actually gonna put our increased stitching in there we're gonna put two single crochets in the very last stitch so I'll meet you up when I get there I'll show you that and then we'll go on to round seven all right, so finishing round six here, just want to put two single crochets in the last stitch right there. And then we're going to move our stitch marker up and go on to round seven. So actually rounds seven, eight, nine, and ten are basically these last four rows. So seven is a repeat 
of round three here, doing the uh, fair aisle stitching. You're gonna single crochet with white for the first two stitches and then the start of the the red stitch and then three white, one red, three white, one red, all the way around. And then for uh, round eight, it's going to be a repeat of round four here, just single crochet in the white all the way around. Then round nine is a repeat of round five right here where we single crocheted with four stitches first with the white and then did the red stitch. And then round 10 will be a repeat of this round six where we increased at the very last stitch. It's just a single crochet in each stitch around with two single crochets in white in the last stitch. So I am going to repeat rounds three, four, five, and six for rounds seven, eight, nine, and 10. Once I finish round 10, I'll come back on screen here and we will go on to, let's see, round 11 after. All right, so I just uh, finished rounds seven, eight, nine, and 10. They were just a repeat of rounds three, four, five, and six. Okay, so we just repeated that. And you can see after round 10, or at the end of round 10, there's two single crochets in that last stitch. Uh, however, round, um, let's see, uh, that was round seven, so round eight here, there's only one single crochet in that last stitch. The, the plain single crochet rounds, Okay, so round eight had just one in that last stitch, but round 10 had two in the last stitch. So now this next step is going to be a little different. It's going to be very similar to these uh, four, four rows, except we're gonna do a fair aisle row, then we're gonna do this row where there's an increase, so where this next row would be um, two in that, next or in that last one and then there would be a fair aisle row and then the next row would be just like this we're going to increase very a lot more now because at this point if you look at the piece here this is past the ankle and now we're going to go up to the calf of the leg okay so this is the this would be like the foot part, the heel we'll do later. This is the ankle. So now we're just going to go up the leg and increase for the calf muscle. So we wanted to start increasing quite a bit more now. So what we're gonna do, and this, this is for right and left foot. Okay, so these last four rows were a repeat of these four rows, and that is for left and right foot. So do your fair aisle row, then a plain single crochet row, then a fair aisle row, and then the plain single crochet row, okay? With an increase on the last row on this um, one. So now, I don't wanna confuse you too much, but we are gonna go on to round 11, okay? And this is for both of the right and left, okay? We are going to do a fair aisle row at this point. So let's repeat uh, basically what we did for round three here, this fair aisle row. So you can see here I have to do two single crochets in white starting out. So let's do that. One, and then change color on the second one to red. Fold that forward, grab the red in the back and pull that through to finish that stitch. Then make your fair aisle stitch, which is the red stitch right here. Okay, I'm doing the left foot. This might be different if you're doing the right foot. I think you might have to do just one and then your fair aisle stitch is there. Um, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> um, I'm only doing the left foot right now. But just do your fair aisle stitches, making sure they line up with that. I also wanted to mention, and a lot of these, this stuff that I'm going to say here, uh, it will be in the notes section of the written pattern because there is, I don't want it to be too confusing, but um, there's some things I have to explain. And that is that at the end of the rows that have increases, the ends of your rows will look a little different every time. But the beginning of your rounds are always going to be the same. Okay, so if you see here, if I 
you can see where we start our, our uh, round here. So now that we've increased two stitches here and two stitches here, you can see that there will be kind of a V increase on this side. And we want this to be on the inside of the leg. That's why this one is on the left foot. And if you look at my right foot, I'm going to bring that in here real quick. If you look at my right foot, the increase is on the inside of the leg. Okay, so you can see the line too where we increased this much. So there's the line that we increased so much right here. And you can see the Fair Isle design and everything, so just make sure every time you start your round, here, go down here, this is the whole section here. So every time you start your round, it's always the same on your right foot. And then when you end and do your increases, you're going to be inserting some Fair Isle stitches, extra Fair Isle stitches in here. Okay, so you can see that the line goes, uh, it, the increase is there. And this is my right foot, so this one is on the inside of the leg, and you can see it's opposite. There's the heel, so this one's opposite facing. And then if you look at the left leg, which is what I'm working on now, the increase will be on the opposite side. So you can see the heel would be here, and then the increase will be on this side, so that this is the inside of the right leg, and this is the inside of the left leg. Okay? So I hope that clarifies some uh, information for you so that where your increases will be, you will be inserting extra fair aisle stitches when you do your increases. So like I said, we are going to be repeating now. Right now we're doing a, a repeat of the fair aisle stitches. Okay, and then what we're going to do, see, sorry, we're going to um, go on to round 12 next, which is actually going to be an increase round. So I'm just going to do these fair aisle stitches, no increase for round 11, and we're just going to do that, and then I'll come back and show you round 12. All right, so I just finished round 11 here doing my um, fair aisle stitches. Now every row that you do that has an increase, the end of your row is going to be different than the previous or the end of your fair aisle rows will be um, different than your previous fair aisle rows because um, you're increasing so you have to add those stitches so you will add more of these red stitches you'll add more of these white stitches because we're increasing so we need to fill those stitches I hope that makes sense um, so we are increasing now and you can kind of start to see that this is going diagonally and you'll see it a lot more now because we're going to increase a lot more so on these rows these plain single crochet rows that are just the white we are going to be increasing exactly like we did here where we did um, two single crochets for that repeat of round six okay right here and right here round six of the leg here so you can see we have two here to here so in this next round round 12 we are going to do that exact thing we are going to single crochet in each stitch and put two stitches in the very last stitch okay so do that all the way around and then I'll come back on screen and then we'll go on to round 13 next Okay, when you finish um, round 12 here, we are going to be putting two single crochets in the last stitch. So this was just a plain single crochet round with the, just the white here. Moving the stitch marker up, going on to round 13 now, we are going to do the fair aisle stitches. Um, for me, for the left sock, we are repeating round 5 which was down here, you can see we single crocheted in four stitches in white and then started with the fair aisle design. So even though we're increasing and the ends of our rows are going to change when we do the, um, the fair aisle look, the beginning never changes, okay? So the beginning of our rounds never changed, but the ends will because we're increasing. But you wanna just line up your stitches and make sure that the fair aisle, the red stitches are in their correct spots. So 
If you need to add a stitch here or there, it is no big deal at all, okay? So don't freak out if you are short a stitch or have extra stitches or anything. It's not going to make a difference whatsoever. Just make sure that you line up your uh, Fair Isle stitches and you're good to go. So this round, round 13 now, is a Fair Isle stitch round. So I'm going to make my, or add my red stitches in here and then do that all the way around and then once I finish this round round 14 is going to be basically a repeat of round 11 there where we added or I'm sorry not round 11 <laughs> round 12 where we added the two single crochets in the last stitch because the next round is just a plain single crochet round with just the white, but we want to add two single crochets in the last stitch because we're increasing so much right now. Like this is going to be the big, the big widening of the leg so that our calf can, is not suffocated basically. <laughs> so I'll just finish this round, um, round 13 right now, and then I'll come back and show you round 14 next. Okay, so as I was saying before, making two of these uh, single crochets in that last stitch will create the next round to be ending a little different than that previous round. So you can see I've added now a Fair Isle red stitch in one of my last two stitches. So it will change um, as you increase. So I just wanted to show that. Um, so now going on to round 14, it's going to be a repeat of... Uh, round 12 here where we have just a single crochet sorry this is round 12 here and coming around here so just a single crochet with white all the way around until you hit the last stitch and we're gonna put two white stitches in the last stitch so I'll do that just repeat round 12 for round 14 and once you've done that I'll come back and go on to the next step with you next all right, just finishing round 14 here and putting two single crochets into the last stitch there. So now moving up to round 15, the next 20 rounds, rounds 15 through 35 is going to be a repeat here. So what I need you to do, if you need to rewind this, you can. We are going to be repeating rounds uh, 11 here, 12, 13, and 14. So these last four rounds, uh, this is a fair aisle round, then an increase round where you have two single crochets in the last stitch there. Okay, so fair aisle round, or let me see here. The next round is a fair aisle round for us here because we just did a single crochet round. So do your fair aisle round starting with your uh, stitch should be right here lined up with this one. Okay, so do your fair aisle round, then a regular single crochet round with two single crochets in the last stitch, then another fair aisle round, which would be this repeat here, uh, where the, the fair aisle stitch will be on uh, offset, okay? Then a single crochet round where there's two single crochets in the last stitch. So every other round, that the rounds that just have a plain single crochet and end, with this, it's going to have two in the last stitch, so your increase will be quite large, okay? So I'm going to repeat rounds 11, let's see here, round 11 is right here, 12, 12 ends with two single crochets in the last round, then 13 is a fair aisle round, and round 14 where there's two single crochets in the last stitch. Okay, so rounds 11, 12, 13, and 14. Repeat those until you finish round 35. Okay, at the end of round 35, let me see here, I have 52 stitches. Now, if you, if you make your piece and the increase is great and you're going to be increasing quite a bit here uh, and you get to uh, 52 stitches around for round 35 and it's not big enough just continue repeating these four rows until it is big enough to fit around your calf okay it also needs to be a multiple of four so 52 divided by 4 is 13 
So you could do 56 stitches around, uh, increase to 56 stitches, or 60 stitches around if you need to. You can increase however much you need to. It just needs to be a multiple of four when you finish. Okay, so I'm going to finish this and do the repeat of these last four rounds, um, doing it up until round 35, and that's for right and left foot. Okay, right and left foot um, sock. Do fifth, rounds 15 through 35, or however long you need it to be, um, or however many increases you need to do. Do it, and I'm gonna show you, when I get to round 35, it will fit around my leg, so I'm going to stop there for me personally because I want these to fit me. <laughs> and once I finish round 35, we are going to be done increasing, and then I'll come back and show you how to go on to round 36. All right, so I just finished round 35. I actually had this one uh, finishing off camera. You can see my stitch marker is gray now. <laughs> so um, I had this one worked up off camera. This is a left foot um, that we've been working with, um, but I just was making a few of these. So you can see here how my Fair Isle stitches... Oh my goodness, sorry, cat. <laughs> there you can see how my fair aisle stitches have lined up and you can actually see I did screw up one little stitch here it's just a random one and I messed up on a couple of rows here where I had two single crochets in one row and then I'll put two single crochets in the next row <laughs> and a um, mixed up and my brain wasn't working while I was doing these repeats so I just made sure that then the next two rows I did not increase. So you can really increase however you, you really need to. Just make sure it's at the end of your row. So yeah, I did screw up a couple of times and nobody's work is going to be perfect, but um, that is just how it goes sometimes when you're a creator. So what I did uh, is just repeated um, my last four rounds of the 11 to 14. Okay, and I just did that 11 to 14, 11 to 14, 11 to 14 until I got to round 35 here. So I just finished round 35. Round 35 for me was a fair aisle round. You want to make sure you end on a fair aisle round and that your multiple is of four. Okay, just make sure that your last round is a multiple of four and that it is a fair aisle round. Okay, that's all you really need to worry about. So, and you can see that this line is here, but that'll be on the inside of the leg, so nobody's going to see that. And you can see my right leg is exactly the same. Here is the line right there. So you can see that increase, and um, that is on the inside of the leg. So my right leg is already finished, so I'm only demonstrating the left leg, and I said that so many times in this tutorial already, it's getting annoying. So... I'm going to continue on. This is for the, this whole section was for the right and left foot. Okay, so same concept for the right foot. 11, repeat rounds 11 to 14 till round 35. Once you get to round 35 or however, uh, whatever round you're on to fit around your calf, you can see that the increase actually, hold this up, you can see that it is coming out pretty nicely on each side. And this will fit around my leg. Like I said, these are really stretchy. I love this Amore yarn. It is super stretchy, so that's going to really fit nice and snug around my leg and not slip down my calf, which is really nice. So going on to round 36, we are not increasing any longer, okay? So round 36 is just Move the stitch marker up, okay, and we are just going to single crochet, oh my goodness, let me get in the stitch here, <laughs> we're just going to single crochet all the way around with the white, and put just one single crochet in the very last stitch, okay, just make sure you're getting into the stitch, there we go, so... For me, I was working over this straggler to get to the next spot, and now I can drop it in the back for the next row. 
once you get to this point, I mean, there's no turning back now. You got to continue because we are going to be so close to the end very soon. This part is just this basic um, repeat now for the rest of this pattern. So it's this row is round, round 36 is just a single crochet all the way around. Then round 37 is going to be a fair aisle round, no increases or anything. Round 30, uh, 38 is going to be a fair aisle, or I'm sorry, not a fair aisle, a single crochet round, plain. And then round 39 is the fair aisle round. And we're basically just repeating these four rounds now, just doing um, fair aisle every other round. But I'll show you that, obviously. <laughs> I'm not going to leave you completely hanging. So obviously you can see I'm doing round 36 now. We're just single crocheting in each stitch around with the white and there will be no increase at the end of this round and I'll show you to how to go on to round 37 next. Okay, when you finish round 36, do not put an extra single crochet in the last stitch there. I know you're going to want to, <laughs> but don't do it. <laughs> so we're going to move our stitch marker up now, right here. And going on to round 37, we are going to be repeating our fair aisle stitches. And as you can see here, we want it to line up with um, the fourth row previous. So you can see here, our first one will be right here. So we want to, for me, on my left foot, I'm going to single crochet in the first four stitches with white. So our rounds now will all be the same. So, And this is for right and left foot. So round 36. Seven now we are single crocheting the fair aisle design so it's white stitches first okay switch to the red and trail these along and do your fair aisle stitches again no increasing or anything just do your fair aisle stitches around just like this and that's round 37 and I'll come back show you round 38 next all right, just finished doing the fair aisle design there. So going on to round 38, we are going to do just a plain uh, single crochet round with without adding the, the red stitches in there. So we're just basically repeating round 36 there. <laughs> so just a single crochet into every stitch just like that okay so again and no increases any longer okay this is for both right and left foot and I'm just gonna single crochet around oopsie and not working over the top of my red <laughs> gotta leave that in the back and not trail that around I forget I have forgotten that throughout this project so just make sure you trail you don't don't crochet over your red we're going to use that in the next round, and I'll come back and show you round 39 next. Alright, again, do not put two single crochets in that last stitch for round 38. I'm moving on to round 39 now, moving my stitch marker up, and I'm going to do the fair aisle stitches. And as you can see, four rows pre previous, this is where my stitch, my red stitch should be. So I'm going to single crochet in these first two stitches, and then add my red stitch there. So uh, for the right foot, it will be different, but um, just do your fair aisle stitches for this one is like this oopsie <laughs> not just like that <laughs> don't lose your loops <laughs> so single crocheting in two stitches with the white and then adding the red and single crocheting with one red stitch and then moving back to the white and just doing that all the way around now so three red and then one, or I'm sorry, three white, and then one red, three white, then one red, and so on. So that's the fair aisle. Look for it. So I'll do that, and then I'll come back, and we'll go on to the next step together. All right, so I just finished round 39 there. So for me, I ended with just one, uh, in one single crochet in white, okay? So 
going on to now rounds 40 through the rest of this pattern, basically, for, for the length you want, we're just repeating those last four rows, okay? So repeat rounds 36, 37, 38, and 39 as many times as you want. So it's just a plain single crochet round, Okay, again, no increases, just plain single crochet with the white, then your fair aisle stitches on the next round, then plain single crochet with the white, and then your fair aisle stitches on the next round, just offsetting your fair aisle stitches, your red stitches. So just repeat that uh, rounds 40, I'm going to do rounds 40 through 86 for my leg uh, that will reach up to my knee and um, right before the cuff. Okay, so as you can see my right foot here, so I have my right foot done and you can see I'm doing now this section. We stopped increasing at this point and so we are going to just repeat the fair aisle look up until this point here. Once I get to, on my left foot here, once I get to around 86 for my leg, I'm going to come back and show you how to do this cuff. So just do as many rounds as you want. You don't have to do up to 86. You can do more or less. So however high you want yours to be. You can see here's my heel. Here's where my heel is going to be for this one. And lining them up. So I just have to do about 40, 45 rows or so. So I'm going to do that up until this point. And once I do this section here, I'm just going to do it off camera because it's just, it's just these repeat of these last four rows. So uh, repeat rounds 36 to 39 as many times as you want to get up to your knee. And then I am going to come back and we'll go on to then fastening that part off and making the cuff next. Okay, so uh, welcome back. <laughs> um, this is what my sock looks like right now. I did this whole section here, and what I actually did, I ended up doing up to row 86, and it actually was too long for me. I thought I had to do 86 rounds, and I didn't actually. So I ended up frogging a few rounds here. So I ended my sock on round 74. Okay, so seven, from from the heel hole. So this is round one, two, three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Going all the way up from our chain from the heel hole, going all the way up here is 74 rows. Okay, sorry if I messed that up, but um, if you need to do 86 rows of your really long legs, you totally can do that. But you can do as many rows as you need to. And then we are going to make the cuff next. So congratulations. That was a long time, actually. <laughs> that took me a while. Um, so what we're going to do is fasten this off. So you can, if you want to, remove your stitch marker there. You can cut your red yarn here. And for your white yarn, we're just going to go into the next stitch. You can just go at the top of the stitch if you want. Yarn over, pull through and through. Kind of like how we did the foot part. And just chain one cut this yarn, pull it all the way through and pull tight, and then we'll sew in those two ends. Uh, but I do want to show you how to do the cuff right away. So I'm going to do my cuff in just this red color here. So let me grab this yarn. And you can start the cuff really in any stitch. I'm actually going to flatten this piece out uh, so you can see the heel hole right here and flatten it out. And we're just going to start in a stitch in the back here in any stitch okay and this part you can work in the top of the stitches like you normally would a single crochet very simple cuff here we're just going to chain two so i just hooked that through here i'm going to twist this around here so it secures it and then i'm going to chain two one and two and that does not count as anything it just gets us to the height we need because we're going to double crochet now so let's yarn over go into the same stitch that we just attached to then oh, there's my straggler <laughs> yarn over and pull it through yarn over and pull through two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. And that is a double crochet. And what we're going to do now is just double crochet into each stitch around 
for this round. Right at the top of the stitch there, just double crochet. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is all we're doing for this round, very simple. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back and show you how to do round two of the cuff. All right, when you come all the way around, you can see a double crocheted all the way around. And now I'm gonna make a ribbed design. So we're gonna use front post and back post double crochets. So what we're actually gonna do is slip stitch to the first double crochet here, okay? So ignore this chain up two. We're gonna go actually into the actual stitch right at the top here. And then yarn over, pull through and through. And now we're gonna chain up two one and two, again, that does not count as anything, that just gets us the height we need. And we are going to front post double crochet around this, whoops, can you see that? There we go. We're gonna front post double crochet around this first double crochet right here. So yarn over, go on this side of the post, so this first double crochet that we just slip stitched into, we're gonna go on this side of the post, okay, around it to the other side, just like that and then yarn over and pull it through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops, and that is a front post double crochet. Now on the next stitch, we are going to back post double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, we're gonna go on the back side of our work, around this post, to the other side, just like that, and then back to the back again, yarn over and pull that through, and then yarn over and pull through two loops, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. And that is a back post double crochet. So we are going to alternate these two stitches all the way around. So the next stitch, front post double crochet, just go on this side of the post, around it, just like that, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then the next stitch is a back post double crochet. So yarn over, go behind your stitch around the post to the back again, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're just gonna alternate those two stitches all the way around. And once I get back to the beginning, I will show you how to go on to the next round. All right, when you come back to the beginning, you want to slip stitch to the first front post double crochet right here. So ignore this chain up two, just go into the front post double crochet, yarn over, pull through and through. And now what we're going to do for rounds three and four, the next two rounds, we are going to repeat round two. So just chain up two, and on the front post double crochets, we are going to make front post double crochets. And on the back post double crochets, we're gonna make back post double crochets. And it's that simple. So we're just gonna do that all the way around for the next two rounds. And then just slip stitch to your first front post double crochet when you come back to the beginning, just like I just showed you. So just continue alternating these two stitches just like that for two rounds. And once I finish round four, I'll come back and we'll fasten this part off. And then we just have the heel left. Okay, so I just did rounds three and four here. I slip stitched to the first uh, front post double crochet and we're going to fasten off after round four. Now you can continue just repeating that last row if you want this uh, cuff to be a little thicker, but I'm gonna end after row four. Just chain one, cut your yarn and pull through after you slip stitch to that first stitch there and pull that tight and then grab your yarn needle and just sew that end in right away. And then the last thing we have to do is the heel. Now I'm going to use the same red color for the heel and the heel is very quick actually um, so I'm going to show you that in just a second let me just sew this end in and I have a couple ends to sew in there too <laughs> so all right going down to the heel here this is for right and left foot exactly the same what you're going to do is lay this flat just like this Okay, and we're gonna start in the center. You're gonna just eyeball it, I guess. Center stitch from the toe. So looking up right here in the center, going up, and we're doing it from the uh, bottom of the foot. Okay, so this is the bottom of the foot. We're gonna go right in the middle. I would say right about 
here, the stitches middle here. Okay, and then we're going to grab the yarn and hook that through. Now I'm looking at the outside of the foot and we are hooking that in like this. Okay. And we're going to chain one just to secure everything. And these rounds are actually, we're not working continuously. We're going to single crochet around this whole thing and we're going to slip stitch to the beginning here. So we're going to just single crochet right into the same stitch, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops. Okay. Then we're going to go into the next stitch here. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> okay, and then <laughs> continue. Um, just single crochet. You know how to do single crochets. And you can see I'm working on the top of the stitch. I'm not working in the actual stitch. If you want to continue working how we worked these stitches, working into the middle of the stitch between those two vertical lines, you can. But I'm not, I'm tired now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna <laughs> crochet in the top of the stitch. But it really is up to you on how you want to do it. So let's see here. We're just going to single crochet all the way around. And it looks like for me, I will have 38 stitches. So if you want to single crochet evenly, 38 stitches around, do that. And then I'll come back and show you what to do next. All right, as you can see, I single crocheted all the way around going from this side up to this side and then across here and then back down to this. Now you can see that there is a hole here. I will be sewing that closed later and there might be one on the other side for you too. So um, just ignore that there's a hole there. I will be, I did see that and I will fix that later. So we're going to come back around and we are going to slip stitch to the first single crochet stitch right here. Okay, so not this, this chain up one will be too difficult to get to. So just go into the first single crochet and I have 38 stitches around. Okay, if you have more or less, it does not really matter. Um, so just don't worry about it. <laughs> so we're going to yarn over, pull through and through. Okay, and then... We're going to chain one and go on to round two, and it says if you need to actually mark your spots on either side. So on this side here and on this side here, mark one of these stitches that are on the side. Okay, so you can see that this stitch right here is on this side and this stitch here is on this side. So mark this side here and mark this side here because that's where we're going to be decreasing on both on each round on both sides so for mine since i have the 38 stitches it says to single crochet into the first seven stitches here so going into this very first stitch that we just slip stitched into single crochet in there and then next six here so this is the first one so next one would be two Here's three, four, five, six, and seven. And then what we're going to do is single crochet these next two stitches together. So go into this next stitch here, yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, I know it's not to this side yet, we're going to decrease again. <laughs> so it says single crochet into the next stitch, regular single crochet, and then single crochet the next two stitches together. And that's where the decrease again on this side will be. Okay, so single crochet those two together. You can see I have three loops on my hook. I'm pulling through all three loops. I've made those two stitches into one. Okay, now it says on my pattern, let's see here, single crochet into the next 14 stitches. So we're going to, I'm going to turn this around. Sorry if you can't see that. There we go. So we're going to turn this around. I'm going to work across here in the next 14 stitches, just putting one single crochet in each stitch. So let me see if I can just count that real fast here. One, two, three, four, five. 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay, and now we're at this end here. We're gonna single crochet these next two stitches together. So go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, go directly into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops, just like that. And then we're gonna single crochet into the next stitch right there, just a regular single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet these next two stitches together just like that and then we should have seven stitches left on this row I'm going to count them out we're just going to single crochet in the rest of the stitches one two three four five six and seven and then we're just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet right here so ignore the chain up one just go into the stitch and then yarn over pull through and through fabulous going on to round three already chain one and you can see here it is starting to decrease looking like a heel I'm so excited okay going on to round three it should it says you should have 34 stitches at this point and round three is just a single crochet into each stitch around so no decreasing on this round single crochet into the stitch that you just slip stitched into don't forget to do that and then single crochet into each stitch around okay so 34 stitches so I'll do that and then I'll come back and we'll go on to round four next all right, I'm gonna slip stitch into the first stitch here, just like we've been doing. And going on to round four now, it's very similar to round three. We are going to chain one. And since there's less stitches though, we're going to do our decreases um, sooner rather than later. So we're gonna single crochet into this very first stitch that we just slip stitched into. And in, it says in the first six stitches. So that was one. Go into the next, here's two. Next is three. Here's four, five, and six. And now we're gonna do a decrease, okay? So we're at the side of the heel here. It's gonna start closing in real tight. So just be aware of that. We're gonna go into this next stitch. We're gonna do our decrease. Yarn over, pull through, go directly into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops, just like that. And then we're going to single crochet. Let me check my pattern real quick. It's a single crochet into the very next stitch. So just put a regular single crochet in there. And then we're gonna single crochet these next two stitches together. So go in, next stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now we're on the other side, or the opposite end here. This side, we're gonna single crochet along this edge here. So that is 12 stitches, just do a regular single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, here's 10, 11, 12, and that was 12. Sorry, I was gonna keep going. I love this hook. So I was thinking about how awesome I love this hook so much. This is awesome. Get your crochet hooks. It would be fancy. They're so fabulous. Okay, going on to the next step, we are going to single crochet these next two stitches together. So go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Do a regular single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet the next two stitches together. Now if yours aren't lining up with mine, just make sure that you do the two decreases on either side of the heel, okay? And there should be six stitches left on this row, so let's single crochet in the rest of the stitches here. One, two, three, four, 
five and six. And then slip stitch to the first single crochet there. Yarn over, pull through and through. Okay, so you can see here, that's what it's looking like so far. So we have to go on to round five now. So let's do the same thing that we did la in the last round, just less stitches. So single crochet in the first five stitches this round. So one, two, three, whoopsie. Sorry about that. <laughs> Four and five. And then do your single crochet decrease. So single crochet these next two stitches together. And then single crochet into the next stitch, just a regular single crochet. And then single crochet the next two stitches together. And then single crochet into the next 10 stitches. That's along this top edge here. So we're just going to single crochet into 10 stitches now. So the decrease is becoming more and more apparent here. Here's one, two, three, four. Here's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then do another single crochet two together stitch so go into this next stitch here yarn over pull through go into the next yarn over pull through yarn over pull through all three loops and then single crochet in the next stitch and then decrease again so single crochet the next two stitches together and then you should have five stitches left on this round so we're just going to single crochet in the rest of the stitches of this round and then we can go on to round six and we're going to decrease again so let's slip stitch to the first single crochet yarn over pull through and through chain up one and round six is again similar to the last round we're just going to single crochet into the first four stitches now so one two three and four and then we're going to single crochet two together and then regular single crochet into the next stitch okay it's getting really tight now <laughs> i'm gonna fold this down okay <laughs> then we're going to single crochet two together and then we're going to single crochet into eight stitches. So across this top here, we're going to single crochet in those eight stitches now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And turn this, keep turning, keep turning. <laughs> the decrease is so apparent now. We are going to single crochet two together. And then we're going to single crochet into the next stitch. Then single crochet two together. And then you should have four stitches left. We're gonna single crochet in those last four stitches. And then we can go on to round seven. All right, so slip stitch into your first single crochet here. Yarn over, pull through and through, and chain one. Okay, so round seven says to whoop, chain one there, and then single crochet into the first three stitches. One, two, and three then do your decrease stitch so single crochet two together then single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet two together and now we're going to single crochet into six stitches so you can see the decreases are so much right now so one two three four five and six and then do your decrease stitches again so single crochet two together 
and then single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet two together and then you should have three stitches left single crochet in the last three stitches and we can go on to the next round so it looks like round eight is our last round here we're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet and for round eight it says to chain one then it says to single crochet into two stitches so the first two stitches here one and two then single crochet two together then single crochet into the next stitch then <laughs> you can't really even see this now okay single crochet two together then single crochet into four stitches across this top here here's one two three and four then single crochet two together and then single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet two together and then there's two stitches left just single crochet in those two stitches okay now you're probably like well this didn't close all the way we're gonna sew the rest closed so let's slip stitch to the first stitch here yarn over pull through and through and then to fasten off we're gonna chain one and this yarn now we're gonna cut long because we're gonna use that for sewing and we're gonna pull it all the way through that chain one and pull tight okay so you can see here is the hole so at this point <laughs> you actually have to turn your sock inside out and it can get kind of difficult because of the type of yarn we're using so just pull your sock inside out to sew it closed okay grab that yarn that you cut right there okay flatten this out just like that grab your yarn needle this is literally the last step we just have to sew this closed and I'm just gonna quickly whip stitch this you can take your time but literally all you have to do is just go in one side out the other all the way across this piece here I'll show you in <laughs> excuse me in this side out this side and pull okay in this side out this side and I am going to go all the way and then I'm going to go back to secure it because this is the heel and usually heels of the sock like heels of the sock and the ball of the foot uh, part of the sock usually is the first to have holes in it when in regular socks so I'm just going to reinforce this back and forth and you can reinforce it however many times you need to and then when you're ready you can stick your hand inside and then stretch it out make sure it's all sewn closed it looks really good to me so we are going to tie this off so to tie it off we're gonna go around in a couple of stitches just like this and keep our finger in this loop and then come back through this loop just like that and pull tight and that creates a knot and you can do it twice or three times to secure it okay and then you can sew this end in and there there actually this is the last step but I did want to also um, sew in some other things here and talk about this sock really quick I'm just gonna sew this end in underneath these stitches if I can get my needle under there there we go 
Okay, cut any extra. And I have a little bit extra here. So what I wanted to show you on this side of the sock, you can see there's like a giant hole. That happens in a lot of crochet socks right here. So what we're gonna do is just go around twice. Okay, I'm gonna tie this tight. And I'm just gonna tie these two in a knot. And you'll never notice. Okay, then you just take these two strands and sew those in. And if you need to, do that to the other side as well of the heel and then sew that closed if you need to. And then I'm gonna uh, turn my sock inside out and then I just have a few more things I wanna say about these socks and then you can enjoy making these and be done. All right, so I just uh, put my sock right back on the right side out and you can see the heel is complete. That looks so nice. You can see the decrease line there and there on each side of the sock and just flatten this out and there you have your left foot sock. I just crocheted on camera the whole thing. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so now for the right sock, I did want to mention a few things. Um, so you can see how this looks. Here's my right sock. Exactly the same, just on the right side. And I, I didn't want, um, you know, the heel hole or anything to get too confusing for you. If you have any questions about this, please leave a comment to this video. I will try to answer any questions you may have, especially around that heel hole and subsequent uh, future lines here of uh, different the rows going up when you increase. Because as you can see on my left foot. This line, you can see the white line there. But for my right foot, it's barely noticeable. And it's just how the Fair Isle stitches, you can see there's a line there, but that's just how the Fair Isle stitches worked out on either one. So this you won't see when you put the socks on, if you tried them on, um, they this is the inside of the leg. So you won't see that when you're taking your fancy Instagram pictures or anything. Now, the um, thing is about this yarn, big thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing this today. This was great yarn, I highly recommend it, and uh, it is extremely stretchy. So if you felt like, you know, if you try these on and feel like they're not fitting, they are so incredibly stretchy, and actually I made this whole sock on camera and never tried it on the whole way through because I was going off the measure measurements of this one and this one fit me but this one was actually kind of tight at first but when I started wearing it and wearing it over time it stretched out within 15 or 20 minutes of wearing it so it's really stretchy yarn and I really enjoyed wearing these they're so comfortable and warm and this yarn is like butter it is so soft you guys I can't tell you enough you guys have to just find this yarn Buy it on redheart.com or go to your craft stores and try to find it because it is, you just have to feel it. And once you feel it, you're going to want it in your stash. <laughs> so I loved it and I loved working with this yarn so much. So thank you to Red Heart Yarns for providing this yarn today for this project. It was such a wonderful yarn to use and it's very, very soft. So that is everything. You've made your socks, so just uh, make one more <laughs> for the right leg. Um, that I was I would have demonstrated the left leg, but make one for the right leg and you'll have your pair. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Big thank you to my dad back there for videotaping the whole thing and for editing this tutorial and for taking the fabulous photos of these socks. And big thank you to you for watching through the whole video. Oh my goodness, that was a long project, but we got through it and I'm really grateful that you stayed with me the whole time. All right, everyone, until next time, happy hooking.